All right then. Hello. Guys, it's time for the political discussions about anarcho-capitalism. This will be a series where I, off the top of my head, with no scripting, will be discussing the ideas about anarcho-capitalism. And today is the first and most basic one. Voluntarism and non-aggression. And aggression. So, what is voluntarism? Voluntarism is a system in which you act on your own free will. Which basically means no one is forcing you to do something. Perfect example of this is going to a store and buying a candy bar for one dollar. Now, did anyone force you to buy this candy bar? No. Did you think it was a good idea? Probably. Even if you didn't, you still did it. No one forced you to. That's voluntarism. Basic example. Now, why is voluntarism important? Because it's the basis of human existence. If people were forced to do things, there would likely be little room for improvement. Now, let me, let me break this down. So, if everyone was forced to do something, they would be demoralized and quickly become tired from doing the same thing. If a person does something voluntarily, they likely want to do it. So they want to do it. For example, person is a businessman. He wants to be a businessman. He is doing it on his own free will. So he would likely do it until he becomes tired of it. Or until he just gets bored or until his business is not successful. Then he ends it and does something else. If a person is forced to do that, the business will not be successful and it will be a waste of his time and stagnation occurs. That's exactly why a civilization or a country like the Soviet Union was stagnant because people were forced to do things they did not want to do, they did not like, and that they, most importantly, were not good at. If a person is not good at something and is forced to do it, that's bad. But anyways, let's move on to non-aggression principle. So what's the non-aggression principle or NAP? It basically is a doctrine which does not allow any person or or organization or in this case state to aggress against you or remove your rights to live to property and to happiness now what does this mean it means that government or for that matter anyone cannot take away your freedom or your property rights in this case property rights being self-ownership aka your will to live and your property like your house your computer, whatever, your, what you own, your jacket. For example, someone steals your jacket. That's aggression because they stole your property. They took away your property. They violated your property rights. How is this important? Well, let's just say government enacts a law where they take away people's homes. That is a clear violation of NAP. So what does that mean? It means that government is violating a person's right to their property that is very bad obviously that is very bad because it means that now the person under that system does not have their rights anymore which means the system has failed them because the government or the state only job in theory in a minarchist view is to protect your liberties and if the state fails to do that it no longer becomes necessary and thus should be removed so, how does this tie into anarcho-capitalism? Well, anarcho-capitalism believes that the state aggresses. For example, taxation is a form of aggression which a lot of anarcho-capitalists despise because you have to give your money and sometimes you don't even know about it. They just take it away and you don't even know it. So basically, they take away your, in this case, your property because money is your property and they redistribute it to other people, which the redistributing part is bad enough, but they forcibly confiscate your property, in this case your money, because money is still property, despite the fact that it's not, it's a median of exchange. So you still own it, you can use it to exchange it for something like a house, a computer, whatever, any other form of property, a jacket, food, basically anything. It's a medium of exchange, and if government confiscates it without 
I was gonna say without any reason, but government should not confiscate anything with they don't there should be no reason for doing this. If government does this, they have failed clearly. And now I'm going to get some leftists in the comments saying, but capitalism is a form of a great No, it's not. You want to know why it's not? Because it's based on voluntary transactions. See, that word comes up. Voluntary. So in capitalism, you are not forced to work. You are not forced to buy anything. And you are not forced to give your money in exchange for something. You are not forced to do anything. You can live under the bridge and cry. No one is forcing you to work. Unlike in a socialist society like the USSR, where you were forced to work. And you want to know why you were forced to work? Because there was no means of people wanting to work. In the USSR, what did you get for working? You got... Well, you got money, but in a ideal communist society, you didn't get anything for working. You get nothing. So the basis of working is entirely based on someone being responsible and willing to work. And guess what? People are lazy. They are not willing to work. So what does this mean? There is no reason for a person to work because they get food under a communist system. In capitalism... The reason to work is to feed yourself, to get the money, anything. It could be fiat currency, it could be gold, it could be silver, it could be anything. Whatever, the, it could be a cow. Whatever the median of exchange is, they will exchange it for what they need to live. In communism, that doesn't exist. That's why communism cannot work. Because of the fact that a person has no means to work. They don't need to work to get the things that they need to survive. Okay, anyways, I was rambling on, but let's go back to the aggression and voluntarism. So, you're gonna say, well, but how would people enforce the NAP without the state? Interesting question, Jim. But the, the answer to that is private communities. Now, private communities already exist in parts of the US and other countries as well, for sure. I have seen them, they exist. Gated communities where they have their own rules, own regulations, own ru yeah, own laws, own rules. And guess who's enforcing it? Not the government. And it's completely voluntary. You can leave at any time, which is basically what a narco-capitalism would be. In narco-capitalism would be a system with no rulers, but you would have laws and strict regulations. Now, what does this mean? No, regulations, what I mean, not against economy, because regulations against economy is inherently aggression, but against a person, for example, to kill, to steal, to violate your rights. So if a person violates your rights in anarcho-capitalism, they would be punished and they would likely go to a private controlled prison or just kill. Like, if, a, if the people of the gated community agree to execute him, he would be executed of any means. If the people agree to it. If the people don't agree to it, they could at any point leave the gated community. And that, that it's completely voluntary because a person does not have to stay there, does not have to give money to them, can leave at any point. And that is the main problem with today's system. A lack of voluntarism. Because you are forced to pay taxes in any government, in any state today. You can move to any country and you would be forced to pay taxes. That is the issue. You are forced to be a part of the system, which is wrong. You should not be forced to be a part of the system. You can, you should be able at any time leave or not even leave. You can stay exactly where you are, but basically sign yourself out of the system and say, no, I'm not, I'm done. I'm not participating. And that should be perfectly allowed. And it will be, it would be if anarcho capitalism exists. Now, that's not to say that every single problem will be solved, that bad people would be removed. That the system would be perfect. No, by any means it won't. But it would solve the main issue of aggression against people's liberties and a lack of volunteerism. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed my little discussion. Come back for more. Next time will be about econ. Will be about the economy, supply and demand, and the laws of basic laws of capitalism. See you guys next time. Goodbye.